everyone, welcome back to the Essential Owl. Erin here to make another cold process soap. Today we are making part of a six soap, <laughs> six different batches of soap for Christmas. This is a custom order, so these won't be available in my shop, but I do have a couple of Christmas and wintry themed soaps coming up so hopefully you'll stick around for that today is november the 9th i believe if i'm getting my date <laughs> correct and yes it is time for christmas soaps for soapers if they haven't started already i'm a little bit later in the game than i usually am just a little bit but it's no big deal there will still be plenty of time to cure for christmas and I'm very, very excited. <laughs> so, today I thought we would start off with Cranberry Fig. This is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I will put the fragrance notes up in the description. Or actually, not even in the description. Up on the screen like I usually do. Now, one thing I want to point out is that this does contain vanilla. It's not very much. But... The strange thing about this one is that per Wholesale Supplies Plus's website, this discolors to yellow, not brown. And it turns into a fairly bright yellow. So that's a little bit strange. I'm not really sure what that's going to do once I add my micas to it. Hopefully it won't make them too awfully discolored, but we'll have to see. And the look that I'm going for here, if you've ever seen... A cranberry that has a pretty distinct red color I'm going to try to emulate that by using the sugar and spice mica from nurture soap and actually I'm using this because I'm out of my ruby red unfortunately I did not look to see if I had any left and I didn't order it in time, so I don't have it just yet. But this actually turns very similar to Ruby Red once it's actually in soap. It looks a little bit pink in here, which is what I was expecting. And if you watched the video that I made on Artemis, you will see this changes into a very pretty reddish color. And I am going to add a little bit of really red mica powder. I don't have a whole lot of this left because it is the best red. It's one of the only red reds that I use when I want a true red color. So hopefully we'll get a good cranberry shade out of that. And I've never actually seen a fig in person. I will put a picture of a fig up on the screen. But they have a little bit of a purpley skin, which I didn't expect. So my plan is to use some purple vibrance mica. This is the absolute best purple. I love it so, so much. It is so pretty. It stays purple. It doesn't morph into gray and it doesn't turn blue or anything like that. So this is a very, very nice purple. It is my absolute favorite. And to darken it up a little bit, I will be adding some activated charcoal to that purple as well. I think I'm just going to do a drop swirl. It may turn into an in the pot, but I think I'm just going to do a drop swirl. We'll have to see. <laughs> so, with that being said, I don't think I have anything else to talk about, really. Not a whole lot has been going on. Now, I posted a video last week after a short break, and again, I do apologize for that there was just a lot going on around here and I just wasn't able to get any videos up so for me it has been quite a while since I have filmed so that being said let's just jump right into the making of this soap Alrighty, I think, all right, that's all the mixing I'm gonna do to the base oils. 
it did turn an interesting yellow already so I'm not really sure what's going to happen after it saponifies and that discoloration starts really taking place. I'm hoping it won't cast a strange tone to the soap but if it does it does and there's not really a way around it so <laughs> all right so I'm going to separate this off I don't want a whole whole lot of purple the main scent that I smell in this is cranberry so I want to try and keep it looking as cranberry as possible and it is starting to thicken up just a little bit which is fine but I'm going to move kind of quickly. This is going to be the purple swirl. I haven't decided yet. I think I might go in with a little bit of glitter on top. Now I'm going to use the rest of the sugar and spice mica in here because it's just a sample size. And I will go in with just a little bit of this really red. Now one thing you have to be careful about with this really red mica is that it does have a tendency to bleed. So be aware of that. If you're gonna swirl it with another color, just be aware that it does have the possibility of bleeding into your other swirls. And this is a little bit thick. It might be too thick to blend up with the stick blender. Alright, so my colors are all mixed up. I did decide to mix this purple by hand because it is thickening. You can see it's quite thick, so I am going to move kind of fast from this point on. But I do love that purple. That's exactly what I was looking for. And this red is also very super nice. It's not super red. It's not quite true to a cranberry, but I think it's going to complement that purple really well. And I think it'll still get the point across that I'm trying to make. So you can see that there, very nice. So I think I am going to, let me see here. Here's my small dowel. I think I'm going to plop and then swirl it with a dowel. We'll see how it goes. Let me put this into view for you all. I know that the camera is not at the greatest angle to look down into the mold and I apologize for that. Didn't think about raising it before I got started. Gonna have to bang this down a lot to make sure I have no big air bubbles or anything. I highly recommend this scent. It's very, very nice. I really like it. It smells great. Okay. So that's all I'm gonna do there. And I'm just going to plop more on top of here. Kind of pressing this into the mold to try to sort of preemptively get some of the air out before I bang it down just to make sure it doesn't set up too much. Now the fragrance notes don't say that this accelerates but everything was very cool when I started right at room temperature 
which is about 74 right now. That's something to talk about. I do actually have a little bit to talk about now that I think about it. I have decided that I'm going to move my soap room upstairs into the extra room that we have up there because this room is just very cramped and because we need to turn this into a second bedroom. We don't need to right now, but it would be nice to have use of this second room as another bedroom for if and when we need it. So I am going to be doing that eventually. Okay, I'm scraping off a little bit off the top so that when I bang this down, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, it won't fly out everywhere. Alrighty, so it did settle quite a bit. So let's continue piling some of this on and just smoothing it out. I'm not gonna be able to really swirl it because it's too thick, but I might try to get some sort of marbly effect like this on top. And I plan on going in with some glitter anyway. And actually I don't wanna fill this up too much because I want to try to swirl it just so there's not really harsh layers in there. And this may or may not pan out because of how thick it is. I hope you can see Kind of swirling it all together. We'll see how this turns out. It might muddy the colors up. It might not. We'll just have to see. Either way, this soap smells really, really good. I'm gonna bang this down again. All right, so I got that good and banged down and it did settle quite a bit. So I'm hoping that I got a majority of, if not all of the air bubbles out. And I'm going to keep smoothing this on top. I know it's making my edges very messy. I will go back in and clean those up later. But for now, Not too terribly worried about what the top looks like because like I said I am gonna go in and cover it up with glitter anyway All right, so in this little salt shaker that I got from the Dollar Tree, I've got some very pretty holographic biodegradable sparkly glitter. I know in this light, it's mostly just a white sparkle, but I promise you it is holographic. This light is not good for holographic. Maybe you can see it, nah. I'll turn my flash on so you can see, but I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. This was not my original intention for this soap to have glitter on it but with the way that it thickened and actually the top doesn't look too bad but it's also not the prettiest so i thought that this would just help give it just a little bit more something if that makes sense i'm really hoping that i was able to get as much air out of it as possible but we will definitely have to see now, I'm just going to give it a quick spritz with some 91% rubbing alcohol. I think I've mentioned before that this can help with the development of soda ash, but the main reason I use it is to help lock in glitters and micas after I've spritzed the top. You can see it's kind of made it a little bit clearer. That will come back as it dries, but this helps 
lock in glitter or mica or whatever you have drizzled on top or sprinkled on top. I feel like it brings some life back into the soap after it has sat and dried because if you're familiar with soap, as soap dries, it does not stay wet and shiny looking. Of course, it dries and it does turn rather dull. But when you spray rubbing alcohol on the top, especially a high percentage of rubbing alcohol, 91 to 99 percent, it really brings some life back into the soap. So let me bring you on for a close up. There's not a whole, whole lot to see, but you can see a little bit better the holographic reflections rather than just a white reflection. But that is it for this part of the video. I will see you all for the cut. We are back the next day to cut the cranberry fig soap that was made yesterday or really last night and it has hardened up really nicely there is a little bit of pitting in the sides but no big gaping holes or anything so I have a lot of hopes for the inside of the soap I'm hoping that there's no giant giant holes in there I did mess the edges up just a tiny bit when I was removing it from the mold that happens sometimes but that is easily fixable there is a a pretty big divot there but it stops there so that that can easily be taken care of it's not that big of a deal and then here is the top you can see in this light that holographic glitter a little bit better you can see that it is pretty much transparent at this point and when I rub like this I don't get very much glitter on my hand at all and I attribute that to the spraying of the top with the alcohol. So let's go on and cut into this thing. It's pretty hard. I just took it out of the mold but it's it's pretty hard already so I'm pretty eager to cut into this thing and see how it looks. And actually, I want to cut it the other way. So here we go. That went through really smooth. I like that a lot. So here is the back with that divot, but then here is the inside. Ooh, I really like it. It definitely swirled more than I thought that it would. There are some little air bubbles, but nothing too awful. Now, this color did not turn out the way that I thought that it would. I don't know if that's from some slight discoloration from that fragrance oil earlier in the video that I mentioned that it does turn yellow which I've never I've never really seen a fragrance oil do that before but the purple looks wonderful and you guys this smells so good I highly recommend that fragrance oil it smells very very nice I need to clean this soap cutter today so here's one side and then the other. Have some interesting swirls in there. That's from it getting so thick and going in with that wooden dowel. So there's one side, there's the other. There's one side and there's the other. This portion didn't swirl as much, but that is okay. So there's one side, the other. I really like those swirls up there in the top. I'm obsessed with that glitter. Just look at that. 
so pretty. So one side and the other. You see there's a little bit of soap there that is not colored and that is partially from it thickening so fast I wasn't able to get all of it, it looks like. So that might actually turn yellow, which isn't that big of a deal. Look at that top. Ooh. So if you're ever unsatisfied with how a top looks, glitter or a mica drizzle or a mica dusting or anything like that is really going to do wonders for your top to hide what you're unhappy with. This smells really good. So there's one side. The other. And top. So there's one side, the other, and the top, and this is the last bar. I think I'm going to trim off this end just a little bit because it did get a little bit smudged just to make it look a little bit better. good clean cut on this bar might have to go in and shave a little bit off but that's okay so there's one side and then the other and the top and that is all that I have for you all for this video if you enjoyed please give me a thumbs up subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you never miss one of my uploads and leave me a comment down below tell me what you think about this soap Tell me what sort of Christmassy sort of themes, if there are any that you would like to see. I'm very interested in what you have to say. Just say hi. It makes my day when I hear from you guys. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.